Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to tell you is, is intermediate stuff. So Vegan was advanced and, and now I want to explain it to you what he did. So we have uh, in this Jesse code uh, language, which we uh, have integrated into JSX graph. Um, well, it, we can evaluate and parse, parse and evaluate uh, mathematical expressions. And um, more or less the only advanced thing we have is the D operator uh, the, to make to um, co compute the derivative. Alfred, and, Alfred uh, sorry, it, is it possible to enlarge the the, uh, the font a little bit? Yeah, it's very small. Uh, Thank yeah, you. thank you. Um, <clears throat> yes, and um, well, with with this manip manipulate, you can, uh, yeah, evaluate this this uh, symbolically evaluate this expression, and uh, and here's a, a very simple example. So. Uh, the derivative of x squared uh, is computed, and then uh, the string with the result is written into df, and then we put uh, write df into the console, and it's two times x together with parentheses. So um, if you have something in, uh, if you do this symbolic manipulation, as Vigan said, it's very, it, it's crucial that uh, you also have a, a, a simplifying algorithms, algorithm which simplifies these uh, expressions. And um, at the moment, there's a, let's say, a hands-on um, uh, simplifier included, but we already have a much better one, which will be included in the next few months. And, and, and then, um, symbolic uh, uh, handling of symbolic expressions may be a little bit better. But of course, we don't want to become mathematical. So uh, it's just for for simple things. Okay, so let's get back to the plan from yesterday. Um, yesterday, we ended with uh, with a grids and and with a grid and axis. And today I have uh, three things in mind. Namely, I want to show you my workflow, um, how I do uh, develop applications and 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 chase xcraft, and maybe this is also interesting for you, uh, because there was a recent uh, uh, change in the source code which makes it much easier. And uh, then. Um, hearing your talks and, and uh, the discussion afterwards, I found out that um, uh, high quality texts are an issue. And so I decided uh, yesterday in the evening to, to dwell in, in, on this and go more into details about text positioning, labels and formatting uh, stuff. And finally, I uh, want uh, to go in the same direction as Vegan did and present you some recent progress in 3D, but mainly focused on uh, on uh, the calculus part of 3D. Okay, let's start. Yeah, uh, so... Uh, in, in, well, in version 1.9, uh, the, the, the internal mod module system of the source code had been, has been refactored. For just using JSX graph, it didn't, doesn't change anything. But uh, sometimes uh, you may want to develop your applications. Uh, so if you really want to go in, in depth and you uh, when uh, when uh, developing applications, you may want 
to include the source code of JSX Graph directly into your development uh, workflow and not only JSX Graph core. Because then you might, um, sometimes the documentation is not as good as, as it should be, or sometimes, and, and then you, if you have some error, you can look at this this the source code exp explicitly and maybe see some some hints um or hopefully you want to um to contribute some features some some extensions to the source code then of course you have to work with the source code and i want to show you that it's not too complicated and uh actually there are two steps Namely, uh, you have you you uh, have to get the source code, and then you can develop locally. Getting the source code is maybe the the, the most difficult for, let's say, for um, non uh, Unix, non Mac users. Um, you have to use Git. And many people use Git in, in some IDE. I use it on, a, on in the command line, and I will show it to you how, how you can get the source code um, from directly from GitHub, where the latest version is. So what you have to do is, uh, uh, let's say you want to have a, a folder chase xgraph somewhere on your disk, then uh, you have to clone uh, the code from GitHub. And uh, yeah, okay. And so I prepared a folder D, and uh, it contains already some folder where I want to develop in. In so it's uh, JSX dev, and this uh, folder contains uh, one file already. So, okay, but uh, we don't want uh, to put JSX graph into this folder. We want to keep both the, the, the application part and the source code part uh, separated. So now uh, I want to get uh, JSX graph from GitHub and this is git clone and then copy it. And then all the files are downloaded. Uh, yeah. Without Zoom, it will be even faster. Okay, then we have a, a new folder with the name JSX graph, and there this contains all the all the code. Yeah. And um, all this stuff for developing JSX graphs, these packages, you we don't need at the moment because we want to develop our own stuff uh, our own application at the moment yeah okay this is getting uh, github and um so if you go into this uh, folder and you type in git status then uh, you see that we are in the main branch so this is the stable version um, we can also check out the latest development version, which I usually usually put into the branch develop. And if you, I want to ask you, please. Uh, so if you if you uh, send in a pull request with improvements, um, send it to the develop branch. Okay, and now we are in the in the latest uh, uh, develop branch in the unstable branch, so to say. But uh, for, for us, it doesn't matter. We we go back to main. I just want to show you the main uh, steps. Okay. Yeah, and now how can I use uh, this source code? Um, and actually, it's quite easy. In the... Uh, 
I have prepared this file in 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 the folder JSX dev. I prepared this file test one dot html and it's this file so how uh what's in this file so i load uh i'm loading jss craft.css um locally from the jss craft distribution for the source code and um instead of including jss craft core I'm I'm using uh, the module system of J JavaScript, which means uh, in the script tag I have to type uh, I have to include uh, the, uh, the the attribute type equals module. Then actually this is uh, redundant, and um, <clears throat> then I'm importing JXG from, I'm going one level up, down to JSX graph, down into source and into, in, and uh, I'm uh, fetching index.js. This is the, the control file, uh, which files are part of JSX graph. And then I can, uh, and then it's, it's like uh, all the things we saw in the conference, so the usual stuff uh, starts. Okay, this is this is it mainly, but not quite, because uh, the developers of JavaScript decided. Um, okay, um, I'm fixing this, so you cannot. Uh, so this is not possible. I cannot just open. I cannot just open the file in a browser uh, in the browser, uh, because uh, uh, the access to the script is blocked. <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, uh, for some security reasons, uh, browsers don't allow uh, to to execute JavaScript code, which is included uh, as a module uh, by using the, the file access. So uh, what we do need is a web server. And um, up to uh, this version 1.9, I mentioned before, uh, it was a little bit a mess because uh, you had to have had a, a really large web server like Apache to support uh, loading these modules. But now it's it's much easier. You can use uh, nearly every web server. For example, <clears throat> uh, I'm using the web server which comes with, with Python. Um, so uh, with, with Python 3, uh, in my example, I'm starting, uh, I'm, I'm using the module web HTTP server, and uh, I want to start this, this code in, this is, can be done like, uh, like you want. I want to start this uh, command in, in JSX dev, but this doesn't matter. Um, maybe we can, we do it otherwise to the D. So again, D has two subfolders, JSX dev and JSX graph. And we started uh, here. Okay. Now the web st uh, server started. And uh, yeah, and now we have access uh, via local host. So we don't need internet access in port 8000. We have access uh, to this uh, to this folder, and there are two folders, and we have now uh, access to test one, and we have our port. So that's it, and now we can develop and and um, yeah, and see the, uh, 
a lot of files were uh, delivered by the by the web server. Yeah, and and the development can can start. And if you make a uh, make an error, which may happen sometimes, um, like. Uh, like this then uh it uh you you see the errors and uh uh okay it's in, in this file there's the error and you can look at the source code of uh of, of the JSX of source code okay and um as far as i know uh you can also install a web server in Visual Studio Code, such that you have all this. Uh, you can all you can do it without Python and just uh, use uh, Visual Studio Code altogether. Okay, this is uh, what I wanted to say about developing JSX graph. Um, Now, um, so I've written it down here again in, in the in the in the notes. Now about fine points of text positioning, and I will directly go to the to the to the JS fiddle. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, okay, uh, so uh, let's look at, uh, at, uh, at this uh, text, hello. The first thing uh, I want to, uh, to say is, uh, it was mentioned during the, the, during the conference, you can add, you can, so uh, usually texts elements are, are at the, at the very end, they are HTML element, diff elements in in the web browser, and you can supply them with a CSS class, uh, with the attribute CSS class, and in our case, it's uh, very simple. We we have some padding to the left and to the right, and the border. Uh, the border is important to see the exact. Um, uh, to see what happens, and uh, so okay, what do we see? What what did we do? We placed uh, uh, we put a text element um, at the position zero zero, so the lower left corner of this text is at position is at position zero zero, and <clears throat> yeah. And it's not the, as you see, it's uh, the the diff element, uh, the division, which contains the diff tag, which contains this text, uh, is as, is at position zero zero. So it's not directly the the first character. Uh, yeah, it's like like it's usual in in uh, HTML and CSS. Okay. And. Um, so of course you can change this uh, like this, that it's at position one zero, but uh, this is clear of course. But uh, um, what's actually exactly happening is this uh, this text box has uh, anchor points, um, and you have to choose uh, one anchor point, which. Uh, and, and the anchor point is uh, positioned, or the text, uh, the text anchor point is positioned to the coordinates we, uh, which you are supplying here. So at the moment, the anchor point is um, 
well, in the anchor point can be uh, uh, set with two attributes, anchor X and anchor Y. And it's now at left button. So uh, we have this uh, rectangle and it's the lower left corner. And we have uh, for each direction, X or Y, we can choose three uh, possible positions for the anchor point. So we have nine different positions. For example, uh, anchor X middle will position it like this and um, middle or left will position it like this. Okay. And, and additionally, yeah, this is the first thing, the, the anchor point. And the second is you can apply a rotation to it. For example, rotate it by 90 degrees, and then you can do it like, uh, then it's rotated around the anchor point in the correct position. Okay. This is uh, uh, positioning or fine-tuning the text position. Now, <clears throat> uh, labels. Fine positioning of labels. Okay, what do we see here? We have a segment and uh, to make it, uh, to, in order to, to uh, uh, allow uh, rotation, I made uh, two endpoints visible, so I can I can rotate it. Okay. Now uh, um, the default value for a segment is with label false, so there is no label even if it has a name. Um, yeah, and. By setting with label equals true, uh, there will be a label. Um, and the label is just a text element, which is bound to the, which is clued to the, to the parent element. And one side note, um, you can hide a label at least with two, uh, in two ways, namely, by setting with label false, or the other one would be with um, with label or, or label visible visible equals to false. Uh, there's a subtle difference. Oh, excuse me. Okay, uh, there's a subtle difference. So if um, if a label um, is, is set with, if for, for an element, the attribute with label is set to false, the label will not create it at all. So it will not exist. Um, if for, a lab, for an element, uh, with label is true and the, the and visible is set to false for the label, then it will exist, but will be hidden. And this may make a performance difference if there are hundreds or thousands of, of labels, uh, then, then this makes a difference. And therefore we have this with label equal false for, for also for points, for example. Yeah, okay, but now for the label. Uh, it's more or less the same. Uh, so we have a CSS class. A position, like I explained yesterday, distance from the host element. Yeah, uh, but additionally, but additionally, we have this offset, and the the, the default value of offset is something like ten ten or something. It's an offset from the usual position by. Uh, um, some pixels, though the values you which are, you are supplying here are in pixel, in x direction, on horizontal direction, and in vertical direction. Okay, and uh, so we can do it like this if you want to fine tune it a little bit. And 
And finally, anchor y and anchor x are exactly the same as for texts. And uh, finally, uh, we can rotate it and, uh, and you can uh, set fixed false or true. And fixed false means you can drag this, uh, uh, this uh, label away from the host element, but it will follow it. So uh, it, uh, yeah, the distance will, it's a translation. Okay, so there's a transformation applied to this uh, to this label, which is uh, kept later on. So, okay, these are the this is the fine uh, fine tuning of label positions. And then we have something in in between, which uh, may come uh, in handy for some applications, namely. Something like this. So we have this uh, this new label element or label text, and it follows uh, the uh, some host element, and we also can drag this around. Just uh, put it in the uh, originals uh, positions. So what happens here? So uh, this is a, a regular text element. It's positioned at point, let's say, I will exclude this. Uh, so it's positioned at um, position zero one. Okay, and, uh, but I have this uh, uh, additional attribute anchor sec. So it's bound to this uh, segment. And then what happens it's, if you look carefully, it's, uh, its position is you start at the midpoint of the segment and go, go up one, uh, one unit or just zero, zero to make it clear. It's exactly in the midpoint. Uh, the anchor point of the text is uh, at the midpoint of the segment. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this does not yet work. So uh, the, the anchor point um, where the label or the position where the label is glued to in the host element cannot be set at the moment. So this is ignored in, uh, at the moment. And uh, the rest it is exactly the same. So you can rotate it and uh, do whatever you want with this, uh, with this label. And uh, uh, so it's a, an, an alternative to, to labels. Um, but actually there's not much difference between, between labels and, and between labels and this, this, uh, this elements with, uh, with anchors. Okay, yeah, this is the first part, uh, positioning of texts. So uh, the, se the second part is um, formatting texts, uh, especially um, formatting numbers which appear in texts. Um, <clears throat> And th there we have we have to distinguish two cases, namely static texts and dynamic texts. Okay, static text. Uh, let's look at this this fiddle. Um, yeah, st a static text. Uh, well, here's a, a text element, and. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's at position 1.4, so it's exactly here, and now you, know, you know why it's it looks like this. And, um, well, and I 
set the attribute format number equals two. So if it's false, let's start with false, then uh, it's exactly the number you supply, it's, it's written there. Um, <clears throat> uh, if it's true, then there are three possibilities which are shown here. <laughs> so um, uh, first you can uh, set the number of digits, two digits, okay? Um, or you can say two fractions, uh, in, the, in, the, in this case, digit is uh, ignored. So uh, uh, two fractions is what we, what I told you, what I, uh, what I explained yesterday for axis tick labels. Uh, it's exactly the same here. Uh, so if if you uh, add use math checks and include math checks, then it would be shown as a math math checks uh, number. Okay. Okay, but this is a static number. Um, the next thing is now we want to have a dynamic, we want to format dynamic uh, texts. And for this, oh, I changed the, the address. Um, yeah, for this, I added a line. And now the task is we want to display the slope of this line. And of course, the slope can be changed by the, by the user. And uh, uh, here you see um, what I did to the points. I added snap to grid two and snap size X and Y to 0 0.1. That means I, it cannot take a continuous values, but uh, it it snaps to to a, to, a, to an invisible grid to get uh, only nice slopes. <laughs> okay, then the first version is uh, now we want to to display the slope, and we do it um, we do it exactly uh, like yeah we do it with a text element which is bound. To, um, to this line element. Um, yeah, like this, we, um, we restrict uh, the number to five, five di digits. And actually, we saw it a few times in this uh, conference using back ticks and this, uh, um, and this uh, dollar and curly brackets with this uh, so this dollar curly brackets means it means evaluate uh, evaluate the, the JavaScript uh, exp expression in between. So it's it's a more um, it's a little bit nicer than than uh, cluing or concatenating strings with this plus. I'm slowly get used to this new method. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so we have five digits and it's always five digits, whatever we do. So uh, infinity, okay, that's an exception, but also zero is, uh, is with uh, five digits. It might be uh, what you want. Uh, then I said before there are three uh, possibilities to to add um, to format a text a, a, a number. One uh, possibility I didn't mention in the uh, I didn't mention the uh, namely the uh, using uh, internationalization support, uh, which is available in JavaScript. I talked about it last year and I made the, the uh, included a link to my slides from last year and to MDN where all the, 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 uh, the options are available. So here, what do we here? Let's look at the, at the code formatting. We call um, our own function myformat 
with the slope. And my format is this simple function we call international number format. This comes from JavaScript, where we can uh, where we add where we add the, the, the locale string and give some options. And uh, now what you see is we get two maximal two digits. And uh, okay, this is this. Uh, uh, okay, we have a minus zero. This is not so nice, but we don't have. If we don't need it, we have less digits than two. And uh, the separator here is a comma because in Germany we use comma. And uh, so if you want this, it's it's good to have. So you can prepare your international applet. Uh, and, and supplying uh, international number format. And then, <clears throat> of course, you can do also fractions. Um, this is more or less uh, clear now. You just have to call. Now, it's uh, we don't have the, the attribute in this case uh, to fraction. But we have to call this function to fraction, and then it will compute the fraction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, final point: uh, calculus in three D. First, I want to, to start with a recommendation. Whenever you, um, whenever you uh, prepare a, a 3D applet, you should add, you should disable panning uh, completely, or you should, you should uh, uh, add a need to fingers true because otherwise uh, people with a touch device cannot rotate uh, the, the view, the 3D scene. Okay, this is the first thing. And lately, uh, well, first, first I have to thank Aaron. He did uh, a crazy amount of work improving 3D support in JSX Graph. So he introduced, uh, oh, he, he made a central uh, projection uh, usable. He uh, fixed all the errors so that he could, uh, uh, so the trackball could be used, and and uh, it's amazing what he did. So thank you, Aaron. <clears throat> um, yeah. Now, uh, up to now, we had this. Uh, axis, this uh, three axis shown in the center of the box or at, at the origin to be, to be precise. And uh, for some applications, it's, it seems to be worth, or it's better to have uh, axis position border. So then it's uh, the borders are, the, the axis are on the sides and with, uh, with ticks and labels, this is, this is now possible. And you saw it, we have 3D texts now, because we needed it for this. We have 3D texts now. Um, yeah, text 3D, hello. What's not possible, uh, what is not possible is that uh, the text is projected with the uh, 3D scene. I don't know if it's necessary. Maybe we should. Uh, we will include it sometimes as an option. At the moment, it it doesn't exist. Okay, and uh, of course you can. Uh, if you uh, uh, this text is not a label. It's this text po point you see in the bottom, and uh, uh, yeah, you can. Uh, it's dependent on the point position. Okay, and the next uh, step, uh, thing, which is uh, a plan, plan for the future, is uh, at the moment you have to to 
uh, hide all the the axes which are on the on these planes. You hide them. You have to hide them explicitly. We. Uh, I promise this will get easier and um, less cluttered. Okay. This is the first. Ah, what I forgot is there's a third uh, axis position, namely none. Sometimes we don't want to show axis and then it's like this. Ah, and trackball, yeah, enable the trackball. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, uh, the next is uh, vector field three D. I, I guess I we are running out of time. Uh, I have to don't have to show you anything about this. I just want to uh, tell you that uh, this simple version, the simplified version from Vegan's version. Is or is also in our uh, database, and uh, maybe one note about this uh, database: you can easily uh, share uh, such a construction. So, uh, just a plain example: HTML, iframe, QR code. Yeah, you can read for yourself, but uh, uh, you can open it directly in a fiddle. And then it's it's here. Okay, this uh, might uh, be very nice for for collaboration. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, the final thing I wanted to show you is well, uh, more or less a, uh, a look into the future. Um, we saw already today um, that we can have uh, 3D function graphs like this. And here I excluded a lot of uh, access, but I promise this will be uh, much uh, better in the future. So what is done, we have this function graph given as a string. This is probably also new. Uh, and V of R is the value of this slider. So yesterday or on, 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 on Tuesday, I used R dot value. So this V dot R is the same as R dot value. So there are two methods to access the value of an object. So in we are in JavaScript, so I have to say this. Okay, um, now we want to uh, will have also contour lines in uh, in three D, and uh, for this we first we use our implicit curve. So we have the same uh, the same uh, function and subtract uh, the value of this slider, which you see. Uh, uh, on the bottom, and at the moment it's visible true. Is that too visible true? So you see some in the two D uh, area. You see some uh, vis uh, some visual some implicit curve, and you can manipulate it. The, the yeah okay, but of course we want to hide it again, and now we want to have contour lines. Um, what do we have to do? We have to take this implicit curve and uh, lift the points into 3D. And this is done like this. We take uh, we, we use a curve 3D with empty, with no points and uh, call our method update data array. And uh, for each point in our implicit curve, we uh, create a 3D point and uh, the set coordinate is, well, the value of the slider. And then it looks like this. 
Okay, we can manipulate the, the function graph in real time and we can manipulate the, the contour line. And uh, so I also have the snap to zero that you can see it's quite fascinating that there are straight lines in this uh, curved uh, surface. Yeah, and <clears throat> then a an, an second wish would could be that we have these uh, contour lines uh, projected to a plane, to the, to the horizontal plane, um, maybe uh, the rear side of the box. And, uh, well, here we do exactly the same. We uh, set uh, the set coordinate accordingly. And then it looks like this. Okay. And so we have a, a contour and its projection uh, below. This was also inspired by by Vigand. He he did the, the first the first version. Okay, uh, yeah, this is what I wanted to say about three D. So there are a few news news, and we will go into this direction. Uh, and but yeah, but there will be uh, new elements. Uh, namely, uh, we have just have to sort it out. What's uh, how to do it um, easily or make it easily accessible, more to say. So we will have uh, contour lines in 2D, in 3D, and maybe some projection of curves into uh, into 3D because we we don't want to plot uh, do this implicit plotting too often, and we have to uh, take care of performance issues. Okay, sorry for being late, but uh, this is what I wanted to say. Thank you.